On July 27, 1855, the first documented Yosemite tourist party came round the bend and saw this. The leader of these pioneer tourists was James Mason Hutchings. His daughter, Cozy Hutchings Mills, wrote a little biography about her dad. Father was a tall, handsome young Englishman when he joined the gold rush in California back in 1849. He put in several years hard work in the diggings, but then lost all the money when his bank failed. So he became a tourist. To pay his expenses, father sold letter sheets. I remember one had a large woodcut of a mammoth tree. Another had pictures of different mining processes, things like that. Writing paper was scarce in the mines, and these letter sheets were immensely popular, like great big postcards. Father kept a journal. It's mostly just dates and weather, but after he saw Yohamity, he always insisted on calling it Yohamity in those days, he wrote a nice article about the trip in the Mariposa Gazette. Monday, July 23rd. Fine and warm. Mariposa. Oh, right. I, uh, there is something I should mention. I was using last year's journal, so the dates that you see printed are always one day later than they're supposed to be. Get it? Right. I corrected most of them. Okay. This day was spent chiefly in making preparations for our journey to the Yohamity Valley and making a sketch by Mr. Ayers of the town of Mariposa. Armed and equipped as the law directs with defensive supplies for both the inner and the outer man, our party of four took up their line of march for the above-named valley. Mr. Ayers of San Francisco, Mr. Stair of Coulterville, Mr. Millard of San Francisco and your humble servant composed the company. Today, of course, you'd simply drive up Highway 140 into Yosemite, but since they didn't have that luxury, they traveled by horse and in the opposite direction, south toward the town of Coarse Gold Gulch. Mr. Hutchings explains why. A Tuesday, July 24th fine and pretty warm, from Mariposa to Fresno River, 25 miles. As past experience had taught us that there are two ways to every place, a right way and a wrong way, and as some chances were against our taking the right one, we took a special pains to find the right one. Oh, everybody knew it, but nobody could tell us how to get upon it. At length, through the courtesy of Captain Bowling, we were furnished with an introductory letter to Mr. Hunt of the Fresno River Crossing, who very kindly procured us with two good Indian guides, one named Hopum, the other Lopin. Wednesday, July 25th, fine and hot, uh, from Hunt's store on the Fresno River to camp, 20 miles. Hunt's store is said to have been near the Fresno Crossing, now at the conjunction of the Fresno River and the Raymond Road, southwest of the town of Corsgold. Here's what it looks like today. From Mr. Hunt's store, we kept an east of north course, up the divide between the Fresno and Chowchilla River valleys. Judging from these notes, they might have camped somewhere near here close to the present town of Awani, just a few miles out of Oakhurst on Highway 49. Thursday, July 26th, fine and warm, from camp to the south fork of Merced River, 18 miles. So July 26 marks the first documented tourist visit to the south fork, an area now known as Wawona. The area had plenty of nice grass for the horses and a low, wide, flat stretch of riverbed that made a good place to cross. Friday, July 27th. 
fine and a little more than warm, yet not very hot. From South Fork of the Merced to Yohamity Valley, 22 miles. Yes, I know it says July 28th, but it really was the 27th. Remember, I'm using a blank journal with last year's dates on it. So, we climbed nearly to the ridge above the Merced, and then descending towards the Yosemite Valley, we came upon a high point, clear of trees, from whence... Uh, did I say Yosemite? Yohamity. I meant to say Yohamity. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. We had our first view of this singular and romantic valley, and as the scene opened in full view before us, we were almost speechless with wondering admiration at its wild and sublime grandeur. What? exclaimed one at length. Have we come to the end of all things? Can this be the opening of the seventh seal? cried another. Ah, uh, this far, very far, exceeds Niagara, said a third. We had been out from Mariposa about four days, and the fatigue of the journey had made us weary and a little peevish. But when our eyes looked upon the almost terrific grandeur of the scene, all, all was forgotten. I heard, I think it was Mr. Millard, say, I never expected to behold so beautiful a sight. This scene alone amply repays me for the travel. We all just had to sit down and drink in the varied beauties of this intoxicating and enchanting scene. The fast sinking sun admonished us to descend and camp on that spot of green where we found grass for our animals in any quantity, and as the Indians are said to be numerous, we set our guard and slept soundly while the stars no doubt waggishly winked at us as we lay and dreamed of home. Saturday, July 28th, fine and warm, Yohamity Valley. While the others explored, artist Thomas Ayers happily, quietly sketched and painted the very first images of Yosemite ever to be shown to the outside world. This is Ayers' drawing of the party with the two Indian guides, Hopum and Lopin, at the center of the picture. Sunday, July 29th, fine and warm. Explored the Yohamity Valley to the head in 10 miles. Passing further up the valley, one is struck with the awful grandeur of the immense mountains on either side, some perpendicular, some a little sloping. Now we cross the river, and still advancing up the valley, turned a point, and before us was an indescribable sight, a waterfall 2,200 feet in height. Monday, July 30th, fine and warm, from Yohamity Valley to camp, 10 miles. After completing our series of views of this beautiful and wildly romantic valley, we looked a last look upon it with regret that so fine a scene should be only the abode of wild animals and Indians, and that many months, perhaps years, would elapse before its silence would again be broken by the reverberating echoes of the rifle or the musical notes of the white man's song. Actually, it was just a matter of weeks. By the end of the summer of 1855, three more tourist parties had visited Yosemite Valley. Hutchings and company made it home in three days, traveling by way of the South Fork, the Wawona area, directly to Mariposa where he published his account just ten days later. I have no doubt, ere many years have elapsed, this wonderful valley will attract the lovers of the beautiful from all parts of the world, and be as famed as Niagara for its wild sublimity and magnificent scenery, while to the dyspeptic denizens of our larger cities it offers recreation and medicine in its pure free air and its ice-cold water. James Mason Hutchings like a maid in a beautiful dream. A home, a home, where the deer and the antelope play. 
Where seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day May I wish you fair weather and an easy trail through life's journey.